Hi everyone, it's Hammond again, and today we have my other boy, my big good boy, Vegas. So um, here we are, another grooming session, because obviously all of our Bichons need to get groomed. They need to look good before Christmas. Um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, we do have some plans to, uh, you know, put him in a costume and make a nice video of it. Just a little bit of uh, festive celebration at home. So, as you can see, Vegas is already brushed. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go through all that prep work anymore. Uh, if you're interested in all the prep work stuff, uh, I have another video which I did with my other boy Phoenix. Uh, you can get some ideas on what to do during the prep work. So basically uh, what I did is just uh, have his coat all brushed out. And um, when I say brush out, I mean all the knots are all clear, like super clear. Um, so I've been using this uh, kind of like a slicker brush, the long one with the with the hook, and I've been going through all of those from the from the very roots all the way out. So how do you know if you have done a proper brushing job? Is easy. Just prepare with a flat comb and just go through it. I mean, if you can easily fluff his hair and your comb is not stuck somewhere, then then it's fine and you're good to go. If you have parts where your comb is stuck somewhere inside and you have to take a good look, so there might be a possibility that there are still um, some knots here and there. And of course, when you're trying to get those knots out, you have to do it really slowly. I mean, sometimes we don't know what is the best tension to use, but um, I think the rule of thumb here is that as long as you're going slow and you're pulling slowly and you have to feel um, the reaction of your dog. I mean, if, if he's struggling or if he's giving you the sign that it hurts, that it's pulling, then you shouldn't, then you should stop. Um, so yeah, so he is all ready for the first step, which is my first step. I would love to, I always do that. Um, so what I do is I'm going to trim off all the hair that I don't want, because I mean, this is a bit massive. I mean, I know he looks cute with this big afro, and I like afro, but the problem is that when he starts rolling around on the sofa or on the bed, then we get he gets all these knots right around his ears and just behind his ears, and then a lot more here under his chin. So we don't want that. We want something a bit more easier to maintain. So we're gonna go short. First thing that we will do is we're gonna trim off all those excessive hair with a trim uh, with a clipper. The one thing I want uh, everyone to to think about is to visualize um, how do you want to cut your dog like what kind of style and how long should the hair be. You should at least have an idea of, uh, of what to do. In my case, uh, I always like to do it uh, starting from here uh, because for me, I find this is uh, the easiest way to, to estimate or have a, a picture of how long the hair should be. So I would usually take this out and I would pull it a little bit because it's all curled up. And then I will probably say, yeah, maybe two centimeters or so. Uh, 
and then I would start from there. So that would be my guide. And if I if I know that the back would be about two centimeters, then maybe the neck I want it slightly longer. So maybe the, the around the neck would be like three to four centimeters. And of course the afro is, uh, is the last thing that we need to do. That's different, so we don't need to look at that. But um, but once we know the length here in the in the back, then we also know how much we should actually take off on uh, on the sides and also on the legs um, i'm doing um, a pad trim which is uh, i'm just doing it the way i want him to look um, i'm not a professional so i'm definitely not going for the dog show look and i can't i mean i just i was never trained to do that um, but I do want to keep um, the Bichon look. I always like to keep uh, their their afros because I like it. That I think it's really cute. I have chosen the metal guard and the length that I want. This one is 16 millimeters. Um, it sounds like it's quite short, but actually not because. Uh, this is pre-wash, which means that uh, the coat is still quite curly, especially all the way down to, to his skin. So even if, assuming, even if I do um, a run on him right now with a 16 millimeters, after I wash and then after I dry, you would still see the hair is actually longer than 16 millimeters. And that's good because we still need some more length to work around after a wash, okay? If, again, if you have help at home, find some help that really, that, that is really uh, much, makes life much easier. So, we start from the back.
It's okay. It's okay. You can yeah. relax. Yeah. No, no, no. Come on. Yeah. Hey, this is good boy. So for around the neck, I like it a little bit longer. So I ch I changed it to uh, 19 millimeters right now, just so that I'm not cutting off too much. So I still have some length to work with after wash.
And then, now we have to uh, do the, the belly and get all those unnecessary coats off so it's easier to wash and easier to dry. are you putting on? And this one is the shortest one, the three millimeters one. Actually, uh, some people would simply just use, don't, don't even use a guard and just go right in it. Um, but I don't. I, I do still prefer that uh, they have a little bit of hair uh, so they don't feel it's totally bald down here. And I think it's whatever you think is comfortable with you and your dog. So as you can see, um, now we're just taking off most of the hair that we don't want to work with. Um, it's not looking perfect, of course, you can still see a lot of uh, long pieces and short pieces here and there, but that's okay because we're going to work on that after we wash and 
after we dry. And now we do the drying. Someone is acting out, so we have to find another way of doing things. Okay. Go ahead. Hey, come. Calm down. Uh, sometimes we just have to try to read the language of our pets. Uh, in this case, uh, I think Phoenix was a lot easier when it comes to wash and getting wet. And he's really okay with just sitting still and let me dry him. Um, but Vegas, uh, ever since he was a puppy, he always has this problem that whenever he's wet or just before drying, he would just dance around the table for a while until, until he's almost dry, then he gets to relax and calm down again. Okay, calm down, all right? I just went to get some uh, kitchen paper. This is a little trick that I do um, because I find that um, the hair around the ears they are more difficult to dry because you can see that most of the rest of the hair is already dry but this is still not. So uh, by doing this it just speeds up the drying process. At least it makes it easier for him and for me as well and don't forget to brush it because this also by brushing it also helps to detangle and 
get the hair all apart so it dries uh, easily. I think he's pretty much dried up, at least the roots are mostly dry. Um, this is a good chance to uh, do some more brushing, uh, just to get all the knots out, uh, get it prepared, uh, properly prepared for the final cut. And while doing that, you can also check whether if there are still bits and be like small spots where it's still not dry enough. You could probably feel a bit of uh, moisture somewhere. And if that is the case, then go back there and dry that out and then you'll be fine. And yeah, so I did mention that um, he gets a little bit uh, overreacting. Uh, when it was still pretty wet. So you can see that now that he's mostly dry, he's actually pretty calm. So now I'm going to work a little bit on his tail as it's very bushy. And I'm using a thinning scissors and it's a little technique I like to use. It's, uh, it's very easy, can't go really wrong. Just twist a small section 
and then just cut, 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 cut. So it kind of thins out the, the hair on, at the tail, but we're not really cutting it off or giving it um, a defined shape, which is not really necessary, but, uh, and actually Bichon's should look better with uh, a bushy tail. So don't overdo it, I would say. While you're doing this, make sure that you're working um, from the base of the tail all the way down so you know where you are, so you're not repeating and thinning on the same parts of the tail. So now I'm already on to the last two bits, two sections, which is close to the very end tip of his tail. All right, and then we're just gonna use a slicker brush to brush out all the loose hair that's cut out, as you can see. My biggest stop. So now it's already a lot better. I think that's uh, good enough. And you know, my uh, I always says if it's good enough, it's good enough. Then we just move on, eh? <laughs> 